Hello there, in this video today I'm going to be taking out the intake camshaft position sensor. The engine is an N43 engine and this particular car is a BMW E92 2013 model. So the N43 engine is in many different BMWs so hopefully this video might help you out if you're having error codes related to the intake position sensor. Not the exhaust one, the intake one. Let's get started. First things first, we're going to pop the bonnet. And we need to remove this cover here, undoing the three screws here, here, and here. And we're gonna be using a Torx 20, so a T20. And we're going lefty-loosey, so counterclockwise. And we're just gonna lift it out here, and we need to bring it away from here. So bring it away from there and out from here and it will lift out like so. Now the intake camshaft sensor is actually this one located here on the right hand side. The exhaust one is over here, this is the intake one. They're actually interchangeable, they're the same part whether it's intake or exhaust. Now it's held in with one little bolt and we're going to need a 5mm allen key, like so. Fits in there and we're going to be bringing it round this way here. So once it's undone, it's really easy to undo by hand. There it is. Now, when you pull this out, you will get a little bit of oil. So I'm gonna just put a little cloth down underneath it just to try to keep the engine clean. Like so. And what you can do to loosen it up is you can move it around like this to try to break the seal a little bit because it might be stuck in there well after uh, many, many years. And then you just need to push down on it. So I've moved this round to here and now I'm gonna push down. Unlike me, you should be wearing gloves when you do this. There we go. It's just got a little O-ring on it. So that there is the sensor. And we just need to undo the electrical connector from it. So I'm gonna get a little screwdriver. Now to undo this, we just need to get a screwdriver and put it in this part here, and then lever it up a little bit, and then the connector will pull out. So I'm gonna put the screwdriver in from this side. Like so, and just give it a little twist and then that will allow me to take out the electrical connection. There we go. And that's held in with just a little bit of rubber. So this is your sensor here, and we have three contacts in here. Now, if you're wondering whether yours is working or not, you can actually do a test if you put the keys in the ignition, and then if you bring a bit of metal close to it, you will see that the voltage will change. So let me get that set up for you now. But it's not a definitive test, but it might give you an idea whether or not it is working rather than not working. But if you've got any doubts, then you can buy a new one of these. Okay, unless your probes are really thin on your multimeter, you're gonna to struggle to pierce through into the connector here. So I'm just using a couple of safety pins because then it's nice and thin. And if you have a look, I've put a safety pin into the yellow wire on the left-hand side and also the black wire in the middle. So we're just gonna be measuring these two here. And we're gonna be setting our meter to DC volts. So we're on DC now. And we're gonna be putting the red lead to the yellow wire, the one on the left-hand side where it currently is now. What I've done is I've plugged back in the uh, the sensor into the electrical connector and if you have a look you can see before I plug it in that it's like magnetic so if I bring a spanner up to it can you see it sticks like that and that's what it's doing it's measuring when this is up here it's measuring the little cam position wheel at the end of the camshaft and that has various different notches out of it and that's how the engine knows or the brain knows where the intake camshaft is so we should have near enough five volts and when we do this you will see the voltage will drop to nothing and at least that lets you know that the uh, the little sensor is doing something so we're going to put the positive in here and the negative in here okay so you can see we're like so and now at the moment we're at zero volts I'm going to go into the car I'm not going to start the engine I'm just going to put the key in the ignition 
and just turn on the ignition so I'm not putting my foot on any of the pedals. Key in here and I'm just going to hit the start switch. You will see it will come to life and we should measure a voltage here now. There you go, 4.7 volts. And now if I get the spanner and put it on here, you will see it will go to near enough 0 volts. Yeah, and take it off like so and it's gone back up to 4.7 volts so that just gives you an indication that the sensor is doing something let me try to get that all in the one shot and you can see the voltage has gone take that off and the voltage comes back right now I know that this sensor is actually working fine just out of curiosity I'm just going to put safety pin into the orange wire I want to see what happens when it goes into the orange wire so that's interesting minus 7.3 volts so positive is still on the yellow wire on the left hand side but the orange wire on the right hand side has the negative in and we're reading minus 7.3 volts let's see what happens when we put the spanner up to it Look at that, we've gone up to minus 12 volts. There we go, and take the spanner away, and it will go to 7.3 again. So, all the way to 12 volts, minus 12 volts, take it away, and minus 7.3. So there you go, we get a reading on those pins as well. And lastly, when I've got the positive into the middle one, which is the black wire, and the negative into the end one, which is the orange wire, we have minus 12 volts. So obviously if I swap the leads around, we would have 12 volts, but in that orientation, I've got minus 12 volts. And when I do the spanner test here, nothing's happening. It doesn't make a difference here, whether I do the spanner test or not. So there we go, that's all the combinations there. Don't worry that it's minus and plus, because you can just swap the leads around if you don't like reading on the negative scale. Okay. I am going to put that sensor back in. I'm doing this purely for the video. The sensor's working fine. Well, I'm just going to take the cable out again just to make it easier to put back in. And the ignition's off again now. So make sure that the O-ring is on it. And we're just going to locate it just there like so and clip it into place there you go you can feel it go in when it's fully home and it should be completely flush with the engine there and i'm just going to do up the bolt by hand to begin with so find the proper home for it there we go now you're only screwing into aluminium so i'm not going to uh, use a lot of force at all there will be a torque that you should do it up to but I'm just doing it just I'm just nipping it up basically so there we go and then we just need to clip this back in here and you know which side to put it on because on this connector here one side is empty and one side is enclosed we need to put that little knobbly bit that's sticking out there on the enclosed bit so when you put it in here the bit that's enclosed is going to clip over that little bit there because that's the thing that keeps it in place and just do it until it clicks into place like so and there we go you can see now that is back home again now we just need to put the cover back on here so we're just going to place this in here get it into the rough position and get this hose on here and there we go you can see that's seated nicely let's do up the three screws You're only going to plastic, so you don't have to do it very much at all. Just nip it up. So there you go, job done. So hopefully, if you've got a problem with your sensor, that will have fixed it, and your car will live on for a bit longer. As you can see, nice and easy to get to, nice and easy to take out, and easy to test as well. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Remember that just because it's testing okay like that, it doesn't mean it is actually gonna be okay, but if you're not getting any reading from it, then there's a good chance that the sensor itself is faulty, and hopefully, by changing it, will fix whatever issue you're having. Thanks for watching.